there we can see the graduation marks on the burette and our liquid is too high. But I did that on purpose because let's go all the way to the other end. There's our stopcock and you'll notice that the jet tip isn't full right now but you can probably see that there's a little bit of water, a little bit of liquid stuck in the tip. Now if we were to start our experiment this way all of the air that's in this tip would be error in our experiment. So that's why I left a little bit of space up top because before I do anything else I want to open up the stopcock and let that jet tip fill. And that was pretty simple. Didn't take much time at all. Although you see I do still have one little bubble in there. So let's go a little farther. There. Now I've got a jet tip that's full. You can even see the hole through the stopcock as it's looking out the side. Now, let's go all the way back up to the top and how do we read what's going on here? Well, because of its surface tension, water forms a meniscus and you can see that right there. So where on that meniscus do we read? Do we read the top of the meniscus? Do we read the bottom of the meniscus? It's usually best practice to read the bottom of the meniscus. You also see another important thing here. In order to read a burette properly, you have to be at eye level with the burette. You can't be up here looking down at it. You can't be down here looking up at it. You want to be level with the burette to take your reading. So I would look at that and let's see if we can get a little closer. That looks like the liquid level is at exactly 0 0.20 milliliters. So let's take that initial reading and zero point two zero milliliters is where we're going to start. Now Maybe our experiment wants 10 milliliters of liquid. And it's an experiment that doesn't need 10.00 milliliters. It just needs about 10 milliliters, but we want to know exactly how much that is. So I know that I'm starting a little below zero, and I want to go to a little below 10. So let's start draining. So we drain down to just below 10. Now how far below 10 are we? Let's get a little closer. Let's get at the right height so we're not looking up or down. That looks like 10.36 milliliters. So our initial was 0 0.20 milliliters. Our final reading was 10.36 milliliters, which means that our total was 10.16 milliliters delivered. Again, this works when we're doing experiments where we need approximately a 10 milliliter volume and we don't need exactly 10.00, but we need to know exactly how much we've dispensed. Now if we're doing an experiment like a lot of them that we'll do through the semester, we're going to be adding over and over and over again. So as long as you keep track of initial volume and final volume, you can always determine how much liquid you've dispensed out the jet tip of your burette throughout the experiment.
Now we mentioned that cleaning burettes isn't always easy. So the best thing to do is be proactive. Burettes are pretty easy to clean as long as you clean them when they're still wet. So when you're finished using your burette for the day, you can drain the liquid into an appropriate container, probably a waste container. Make sure that it's big enough. And make sure you empty that jet tip out as well. And if you leave the tip open, you could do this at a sink, but if you leave the tip open and just rinse it out with deionized water, you should be able to do a pretty good job of getting it cleaned out. The nice thing about jet tips is they allow, they allow you to dispense very small amounts very readily, but the problem is if you're draining a whole burette, it takes a long time, so I usually get impatient, close the stopcock, tip it over, open the stopcock, and now I've got a burette. Depending on what you're doing, sometimes it's nice to just hang them back in the rack upside down so that they can drip dry and wait for the next class. Those are the basics of using a burette. You're going to be using them a lot throughout the semester, both in Gen Chem 1 and Gen Chem 2. So Make sure you use them correctly, and they'll be a really good tool for you when you're working with solutions.